So I just climbed into the back seat. I don't sit back here very often. It's actually not bad. It's, uh, you know, there's definitely space. It's comfortable. Got a nice big window, safety belt. I've got my own little airport on the side. And, uh, and then I've got uh, some uh, straps to hold on to if I need them. So uh, I could see how uh, four people could be fairly comfortable in here. Again, with the storage in the back, uh, you could be pretty comfortable in here. While I'm back here, I think it's worth pointing out that we do have onboard oxygen. So we carry the oxygen tank in the plane at all times. And uh, it works with a cannula system. If we need oxygen, we simply open up the, the bag and we retrieve one of these cannulas. These are uh, activated by inserting the tube into the into the regulator here and then uh, setting the flow of oxygen there's a little rotometer in here right here that's used to set see the little ball it's used to set the flow of oxygen into the nose piece so that's kind of how that works okay so now I'm in the front seat of the plane and uh, a couple safety things to point out down below me here, between my legs, there's an axe. The axe is used in the event of an emergency where if the plane were to be inverted on the ground and you needed to uh, break the window, you could use the axe. We've got the breakers down here. We've got a, a parking brake down here next to the rudders. Um, and then finally, on the passenger side, we have a fire extinguisher on the floor here that uh, you can see here. Moving to the front of the the airplane here and just an overview of the cockpit. I've got the side stick control. Uh, you can see it's got the uh, the little uh, trim control hat. I've got trim control both in the left and right, the vertical and horizontal positions. The red switch is the autopilot disconnect. And on the back side is the push to talk button. It's right where my finger is, a little bit hard to see. So this is the uh, control stick for the airplane. The airplane has what are called push rods instead of cables. The push rods are more rigid than cables and don't stretch over time. This is what's known as a glass cockpit. I'll fire up the screens when we get back in the, the hangar so I can uh, have energy on the system. I don't want to draw the batteries down. Okay, moving up to the main part of the cockpit. Uh, you can see this is the, uh, the ignition switch. We have two master switches. Again, this is an all electronic airplane and the uh, the master switches are used to, uh, again, there's a left and the right. In the event that one of the master, one of the alternators misfunctions or is no longer operational, you can override that with the cross tie and then uh, continue to fly the airplane where, and slave off the other alternator. You see a variety of steam gauges here. These are redundant mostly for the what's on the PFD. I'll fire up the PFD and the MFD. PFD is the primary flight display. The MFD is the multifunctional flight display. I'll show these here when we get back in the hangar and I can put some uh, power to the system. I don't want to run the batteries down right now. Uh, on the left side, you see the you, we've got fuel tanks. We've got manifold pressure, fuel pressure, current flow on the left and the right side, RPMs of the propeller here, oil temperature and pressure, exhaust gas temperature, and carb heat temperature here. Again, these are all on the engine page, but uh, th th this is a useful backup to have in the event uh, maybe you lose a screen here and you want to see it. I actually use the gauges here. If I'm using the, a map or some other function on the, the MFD, I can use these to control the power settings. Uh, over here, we've got this black strip. These are the enunciators. There's about a dozen enunciations that are uh, indicated to the pilot. Things like the doors not closed. Uh, maybe the the alternator isn't pulling enough power. These uh, will light up, and there's also a, a verbal uh, on on uh, on a, an alert that can be deactivated by hitting the acknowledge button. This is a handy little switch up here. When this is turned on, it will activate the Garmin 430s and allow uh, you to do, say, some flight, maybe build a flight plan without 
completely powering on the entire airplane. That's a very convenient function. I use this a couple of times. In the center of the console is the attitude indicator, the airspeed, and the altitude. And then, of course, just kind of going from left to right, again, we've got the two alternator master switches, primer, avionics master. Once the engine is up and running, we turn on this uh, avionics. That will fire up the entire system. We have these rocker switches here, pitot heat, lights, strobe light, landing light, taxi light, door seals, vapor suppress. Uh, the vapor suppress is used uh, when you're switching the tanks. Again, there's two wing tanks, left and a right. Uh, right now I'm in the right position. If I were gonna move to the left position during flight, I would, I would first turn on the vapor suppress. I would then move this to the other to the other tank. I would ensure that I have fuel flow on the left tank. I would have a green light here where my finger is, and then I would verify fuel flow on this gauge. Once that's done, I would turn off the vapor suppress, and that would uh, that, that's how you transfer the between tanks. It's done about every 20 to 30 minutes during no normal flight. You want to keep the fuel gauges needles fairly lined up so you don't get off balance. The heart of the system are these two GPS system, GPS GNS 430Ws. These are uh, WAS enabled uh, GPS. Uh, two systems for redundancy. I normally operate these in what's called a cross link configuration where whatever I program into here automatically flows into this one. Garmin 340 system here. This allows us to switch between radios and do some other things. For example, we can isolate the communications to either just the pilot, so the people sitting in the back don't have to listen, or the crew, which would be the, the front two seats, the pilot and the co-pilot, and then the people in the back could chit-chat about other things. Again, second Garmin 430 here. Uh, this is the GTX 330, the transponder, and used to set uh, the transponder code. It's keyed in here with these keys. It also has the ident button in it. And then finally at the very bottom is the STEC 55X autopilot system. And uh, it's beyond the scope of the video to go into a lot of detail here. But uh, the basic configurations that are used most frequently are the heading mode and the nav mode. If you're in the heading mode, then basically you're using the GPS to fly a course that's set through the PFD. If you're in the nav mode, then you're using the GPS to fly the course that's set by the, the GPS system. Uh, there's quite a bit more to it than that. I'll leave it there. There's three big knobs in the middle here. Uh, this is the power, throttle setting, the prop pitch setting, and then the mixture. In the middle here is the speed brake. It may look like a funny position. It's actually strategically located because the speed brake is typically used during landing. And when you're landing, you've got your hand on the throttle most of the time because you're setting uh, up for the landing. When I fly and I, I don't use the speed brake that often, it really doesn't slow you down that much. It's really more effective at uh, losing altitude. So if I were to come into a traffic pattern altitude and I was a little bit high, I would pull up the speed brake and I'd probably have my hand on the throttle anyway, which is common during the landing process. I normally try to keep my finger on the speed brake until I disengage the speed brakes. I like to keep my finger on just as a reminder so that uh, I don't leave them up and then try to land with them. Over here we have the flap control. Take it's They're now set in the takeoff position. We also have a landing position. We have climate control here. We have an ELT down here, USB ports, and then finally the Hobbs meter on the, on the side here. So here we are back in the cockpit. I've got the plane in the hangar now and um, I thought I'd just uh, turn on some power and just uh, walk, do a quick walkthrough on the uh, with the uh, MFD and the PFD with uh, power on. Okay, so to, to just power up the electronics here, I'm gonna just turn on the, the batteries on the left and the right, and then um, the avionics master switch. And you can see everything's starting to light up here like a Christmas tree. I'm gonna increase the brightness of the screen so we can see it a little easier here. And then this will take about, uh, takes about a minute to fire up. You can see the annunciation screen lighting up, doors are open, oil pressure, uh, fuel pump, alternator off, 
indicators. Here's the green light I mentioned before on the fuel. If we're switching tanks, the green light would switch. It's in the left position now. If I switch to the right position, you see the light comes on on the right side. I'm gonna put the fuel selector in the off position right now. And notice that the fuel valve indicator comes on as a result of that. Okay, you can see the AHARS is warming up. Uh, we, we've got here on this screen, on the EX5000, it's showing the dates that uh, the different uh, nav aids were updated. Continue. And then the first screen that comes up is the uh, fuel page, which I've already been set, so we can move past that, fuel's done. And then um, in this configuration, it's defaulting to the map page and it's showing the, the Monterey Bay and San Francisco area on the map page. If I move this switch, one click to the right, it shows the, the chart page. And this is used when if you wanna select a chart for an instrument approach, you can do that. So let me demonstrate. Let's say I'm gonna set up for, uh, I don't know what airport that is. Or, oh, here it is, Alturas Municipal. I'm not sure where, I think that's in Southern California. And let's say, for example, I wanted to load in the RNAV GPS 3.1 chart. I would display chart. And then we'll pull up a, a Jeppesen chart. And there's actually five different views that you can use using this button here. One, two, three, four, and five. I often use the, the view number three. And what's very, very useful is these are geosynchronized charts, so I can see the position of the airplane, just like in a moving map, on the chart during the flight. Now, if I go to the next setting here, which is the trip page, uh, there's no trip planned. If I were, if I had loaded a flight plan into the Garmin, then um, I would have the option of seeing the flight in the in the uh, on display here. This page unfortunately it's not populated this would show me the nearest airports during the phase of the flight this is a checklist page notice the emergency checklist can be selected on any on almost any of the settings you have the option to go to the emergency checklist uh, the auxiliary page is used to set different default configurations and then of course the the engine page which is used extremely frequently, and that's why it's on the on the far right. The map page is used as well. These two are used most commonly, and that's why they're at the ends, so you can switch between the two. So here's the map page, the moving map page. And again, if we were flying, I would see the indicated route that I programmed in the flight plan along with the actual position of the airplane on the moving map. And then I could switch over here to the to the engine page and I could get all the readings for the engine that are redundant with the steam gauges that you saw here on the right and the left. So this is the multifunctional display, the MFD. And then over here on my left is the PFD. And the PFD, um, and again, it's not fully functioning right now because it's it, it wasn't able to calibrate properly because we don't have a GPS signal because we're in the hangar. But you get the idea. This is fairly standard stuff. Along the top, this is the all, this is the configuration of the autopilot. It's telling me now the autopilot is ready. If I were in the heading mode, it would show me heading. If I were in the nav mode, it would show me nav. If I were nav GPS steering, it would show nav GPS. If I were in the approach mode and landing with a coupled approach, I would get the glide slope indication here. The way this is used in brief is the heading bug is used to control the autopilot. The, say the controller says 6512 Romeo turn 10 degrees to the right, it's done here. So I would, I would bug it. Let's see, we're at 23. So 10 degrees would be 33, so I'd bug 33 here. And then I would uh, hit the heading mode and it would it would capture 033 as the heading. This is the altitude capture. And uh, this can be, this is very, very useful. If, if the controller said climb to 3,500, I, I, I could put 3,500 here. And then using the autopilot, 
the vertical speed and altitude capture mode, if I push both of these buttons at the same time, it would climb and capture 30 and hold 3,500 feet. That's extremely useful function to have. I use it all the time. Um, the VSI bug is the vertical speed indication bug, and this is where you can determine or change the either the climb rate or the descent rate. The barometric pressure, this is set, and this is generally based on the local weather conditions. You hear the barometric pressure, it's set here. It's also set here uh, in the Colesman window here on the secondary backup altitude indicator using this switch right here. Our field elevation is 160 feet. So I would venture to guess that the out, that the barometric pressure today, without even listening to the radio, is 3015-ish, right about there, actually. In fact, you can see that confirms with this altitude here, 160 as well. In fact, if we want to get really, if it were exactly 160, it'd be 3014. And I bet if we listen to the, the radio right now, we would hear something like that. Unfortunately, the GPS is not going to be able to fire up because it doesn't. It's it's unable to acquire satellites right now because of the fact we're in the hangar. Anyway, we're right, wearing down the battery. Just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what these screens look like and how they're set up. There's quite a bit more to it than that, but that's that's the quick version of it. If there's any questions about that, let me know. I'm going to kill the power now. <laughs> Thank you.